Hey everybody, in this lesson we're going to talk about DNA structure and its function. So, what is DNA? Well, from grade 9 science, you would have learned that DNA is found in the nucleus. But, what is its function? What does it do? Well, first of all, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid which is where you get the D, the N, and the A from. It's made up of, so it's made up of a sugar phosphate backbone and and nitrogen bases, so nitrogen bases. So if you look at this diagram here, this is the shape DNA is in. And this shape has a very special name. It's called a double helix, which means that it is twisted. It's twisted strands. So now if you look at this, this is your backbone right here. So this is the sugar phosphate backbone, and these are the nitrogen bases. All right. So what are the four bases of DNA? Well, the four bases of DNA are as follows. You have cytosine, and cytosine is always attached to guanine. That's where C and G are. You also have adenine. Adenine is always attached to thymine. And that is where you get A and T from. Now, there are more information than that regarding this. And it's that there are something called purines and pyrimidines. And here's how they are. So, we have, sometimes the nitrogen bases are what we call, we have, in a sense, two, you can think of as two hexagons or two polygons attached. Sometimes they're one. When they're two, they're called purines. And these are our adenine. So adenine is a purine. And this is also guanine, purine. But when they're just one, they're called pyrimidines. So they are just one of these uh, polygons you can think of. So, pyrimidines, pyrim. Okay, now if you want to take a look at these pictures, this is what they would look like. For example, let me just drag this over so you can see it. So this is what it will look like. So you have your purines, which are look like two of them, and you have pyrimidines, which are one of them. Now there's one extra one right here, we're not going to get into that yet, but that is uracil. That will come into play when we get into our, um, when we get into uh, RNA. So now, even though DNA is only made up of four bases, why is there so much diversity in everything? Because everything has DNA in them. Well, the reason why is, first of all, we got to understand DNA is red three bases at a time. So if I was a DNA reading uh, protein, I would read this DNA three bases at a time. So each triplet I would read. Well, if each position can have four different bases, so each position has four different bases, now you gotta do a bit of math with me, which means that for each triplet, you have 64 different combinations. It's because in each position you have four, four, and four different DNA bases. So four times four times four is 64. Now DNA can be millions of base pairs long. For example, if that's the case, you have 64 combinations for each triplet. Due to that, you have a lot of different ways DNA can be organized. So if, so DNA is made up of 
a lot of bases. Because of that, you have have a lot of combinations. So just by having three bases and 64 combos, imagine a couple thousand bases. So now, what are genes? So whenever we talk about genes, we're not talking about the genes that start with J in which you wear and look, it's, it's blue, right? No, we're talking about genes in terms of genetics. So what are they? Well, what genes are, are basically, they are def defined as the segment of DNA that codes for a specific protein. All right, so what does that mean? It's codes for a specific protein. Well, first of all, your body has around 100,000 different proteins. And each protein has a function. Okay, so for example, they could be like your traits, like your skin color, hair color, eye color, how many fingers you have. But they could also be, for example, enzymes or hormones. So you have a lot of different proteins in you. So a segment of DNA is called a gene. Now every single cell in your body has the same DNA. But why is it that your hair looks different from, for example, your skin? Well, it's because each cell only reads that specific DNA. So for example, in your skin cell, your only the skin gene is red. In your hair, hair only the hair gene is red. In your eyes, only the hair, uh, only the eyes gene is red. But they all contain all 46 different chromosomes. Still, each cell has the same 46 chromosomes in them. So how is DNA found in the nucleus? As we just touched based on, well, really, it's found, it's first of all, it's wrapped up as what we call chromatin which is basically DNA plus a protein called histone. Oops. So histone is a protein that wraps up DNA. Okay, now we have really 23 pairs of chromosomes. This is what we, um, you learn in uh, Science Inside Science with regards to mitosis and meiosis. You also learn that the 23rd pair is what we call the sex chromosomes. These are the ones that determines sex. So in this case, if you're XX, you will be female. If you're XY, you will be male. Now we're going to talk more about this in this unit, but that is the basis of DNA in our nucleus. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the function of DNA. So the function of DNA is to really do a few things. The first one is that it is the instructions for the cell. So it tells the cell what to do in terms of what proteins to make. In addition to that, it is really a, all about self-replication as well. It can remake itself. So that's the other important thing. So hopefully this refresher is a quick refresher about DNA that you learned in Science 9. As always, make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy. And I'll see you soon.